Hello everybody. Welcome back. It's been a while, I know, since I've done one of these videos. One of these videos where I just sit and talk about a lot of the new releases, because frankly they take a long time to make and there's a lot of new releases this week. Particularly this week, these past couple of weeks. There's a lot to talk about in recent weeks. There's just a lot to talk about. And I have many a strong feeling about said releases. So let's just sit down together, drink some wine, and talk about these new releases and all of my feelings. All right, so there's a lot to talk about and some of these things I want, other things I do not want. And as always, there's a lot of ColourPop to talk about because when is ColourPop not releasing new shit? But the main thing both of these categories have in common is that I'm not buying any of them because as you all know, if you're here, if you've seen my previous video, I'm on a no buy this year. There is nothing that I can buy this year in the category of makeup or skincare or clothing, whatever. Any of that stuff I'm not allowed to buy. So this is purely just going through all the new releases and dealing with my like suffering for the things that I actually want and that my heart yearns for or the things that I just think are really stupid, which there are a lot. There are quite a few things that I think are really dumb. Really dumb and quite frankly do not need to exist. So let's go. Let's go. Let's go to trend mood. Let's go see what trend mood's about this week. Okay. In no particular order. These are basically just in the order that I saw them in on trend mood or on indie makeup release. Ugh, I'm gonna take off my sweater. It's warm. It's warm here today. It's warm. Do you like my new earrings? like my new earrings. They're asymmetrical. I love them. I got them off this shop called um, Open the Cellar Door on Etsy. My plugs are not from there. My plugs are from another shop that I bought. I bought them a long time ago, but I'm pretty sure you can find something similar on a shop called Body Art Forms Online. But my earrings themselves are from Open the Cellar Door on Etsy. And I, I love them. I love that they're asymmetrical. I love that they've got snakes on them. I just love snakes. I think they're adorable and really dumb looking. And I just really like animals that are dumb looking so I'm gonna actually move over because so you can actually see what I'm talking about. Scoochie scoochie as Angie likes to say. Just as a tiny disclaimer I'm not talking about every single thing on trend mood or every single thing that's being released because I don't have that kind of time. I just don't so I've picked several things that I want to talk about and that I feel the most strongly about and that's what I've decided to include in this video. The first thing on the docket is the the I Need a Nude Lip Crayons from Natasha Denona. I do not have any Natasha Denona, no that's a lie, I have one liquid eyeshadow and that is it. But I've really been interested in her I Need a Nude lineup because I'm, I've been kind of looking for a nude lipstick that is just like my skin that basically makes my lips disappear. I'm interested in this, I'm like one day down the line I might own some I Need a Nude stuff and I'll probably get the lip crayon and a lipstick when that time comes, but obviously not now. But for now, this looks really pretty. I really like that lipstick color. I like all of the colors of the of the nude lip crayons. They're all really beautiful. Like I can, I can see myself potentially owning one of these down the line. And I've heard nothing but good things about their I Need a Nude line, so Natasha Denona killing it once again. Next thing on the list is the Fenty Beauty Powder Foundation. Blah. The Fenty Beauty Powder Foundation. I've seen a few reviews of this and people seem to really like it. I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued only because when it comes for me to like figure out my new setting powder, I was curious to try their loose setting powder, but I kind of like pressed powders more. And I'm curious whether or not I could use this as a setting powder. Cause I don't like most setting powders I buy tend to make my skin look really dry and I already have like fairly dry skin and like an oily t-zone but otherwise fairly dry skin. And I don't want to like make it look overly dry but I've heard really good things from people with dry skin about this powder so I might look into it a little bit more and see if I could use it as a setting powder. But again that's for like way later on when I've used up all my setting powder and I have nothing else and I need to replace it. Cause I'm on a no buy, I'm not allowed to buy anything, nothing. But these look really nice. As always, I love Fenty Beauty's packaging. I love their formulation of all of the products that I've tried of theirs, I really like. Um, the way that this is presented is great. The, sh the massive shade range that Fenty Beauty is known for, fantastic, wonderful. So yeah, down the line, I might try this. Okay, moving on. This, these are the Christian Dior Trio Bleak 
pure glow eyeshadow palettes. That's a very long winded name. The Dior Trio Bleak Trio Bleak Palette, eyeshadow palettes. It's three shades, three shades. And I don't understand so many luxury brands why they have these tiny little brushes in them that make them look like drugstore cheap makeup. I hate it. I hate it. Just give me a normal eyeshadow palette. I don't need a brush. I don't need this tiny brush in here that's probably garbage that's got that like foam end. You know those like foam endy things that you would get in like drugstore eyeshadow palettes in like the early 2000s and then that's all you had to work with your makeup? Like that's what this makes me think of and I don't understand why luxury like luxury brands are still including them in their eyeshadow palettes because it like it makes you look cheap. Just stop doing that. Just, just stop. It's not necessary. You want to actually look luxury? Don't include shit like this. Otherwise they're kind of pretty. They're, they're really kind of pretty. They're probably not worth the price. I don't actually know how much they're worth. 49 pounds. 49 pounds 50 for three shades. That's a big no for me. No thanks. Bye. They're pretty, but bye. Is it going on the wish list? No. All right, let's move on to this uh, next, next thing from BH Cosmetics. This is a new series of eyeshadow palettes they are making. It is their gemstone collection that is based off of a different gemstone every month for whatever the gemstone of the month is. Obviously January is garnet, so that's the one that we have this month. I don't hate this. I don't hate this. I do hate the packaging. The packaging looks really cheap. I have like thought for a while that BH kind of needs to update its logo, update its whole packaging aesthetic, because it just, it looks really cheap. I have one, pa one palette from them and it is the Love in London palette. I love that palette, but it looks really cheap. Like the front of the packaging looks like drugstore packaging and it's like, you. They could update it a little bit, make it nicer, make it a little bit better and more appealing to a wider audience just because I, I, I kind of am drawn in by packaging a lot of the time. Like the product obviously needs to be good and we'll get to that later, but the packaging is what draws my eye first. If something has really cute packaging, I'm that much more likely to buy it, you know? Um, but this, like, I'm not mad at it. I don't really see the garnet inspiration here just because it has so many other like neutral shades in here which kind of makes it a little bit more approachable for people who are afraid of color. So I get it, but it's just kind of boring, you know? I kind of wish it was more red. I kind of wish there was more red in here. It's okay. It's okay. Am I gonna buy it? No. Am I gonna buy the Amethyst one? Obviously not, because I'm on my no-buy. We'll see how it looks. I will rate that one next month. But for now, this one's just okay. It's just okay. It's kind of boring. I'm, yeah. It's kind of boring. Not going on the wish list. Okay, let's talk about this disaster. This is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Palette Volume 2. And this, I'm assuming, is a response to the critiques that they've been getting about not being inclusive or deliberately choosing to continue to exclude certain groups of people, which they haven't really made a difference here. I thought when I first saw this, okay, maybe they, they heard people's critiques, maybe they're actually listening, maybe this is their response to it. Cause it kinda, it flew a little bit under the radar until, until people got smart. People got smart. One, people started receiving this palette in the mail or whatever and trying it on camera and realized that the shades are not nearly as dark as they make it out to be in this picture, like at all. And then also if you look into the the shades, like the actual like shade names of the products, these three are already existing powders. They didn't do jack shit to try and promote inclusivity by creating new shades that would be more inclusive. No, no. They just put together three shades that they already had and were like, mm, this is good enough. It's, it's not. That's like, it's not even the bare minimum. Like you don't get a pass for this. You really don't. This is lazy. This is lazy or just trying to save face. And if anything, anything proves that you just don't care, it is by taking shades that you that already exist and calling it new. You just don't care. It's evident that you just don't care. And goodbye hourglass. I'm no longer interested in what you do. <laughs> Next. Oh, this is this is a doozy. The Mac and Sims collection. I hate this. <laughs> Who signed off on this? Who made this decision? 
who signed the paper that says, this is good, this is good. It's not, it's really not. Oh, I really don't like this. I really don't like this and I'm, I hate that it has the Sims attached to it because this is, this is lazy. This is so lazy. This is a palette that existed already. This is just a repackaged and resold palette that they had in the past. Like Mac, Mac and EA collaborated on The Sims. Granted, I don't really play The Sims. It's not my kind of game. The the colors that Mac brought into The Sims for the makeup was actually like they're really colorful, really inspired. In in my opinion, in my opinion, it was it was quite good. I'm sure that the modding community has even better stuff going for them. But because I'm not part of that community, I can't really say. But to me, the stuff that I saw them put into The Sims looked really good. And then Mac does this. What is this? This is garbage. And then they come out with this this statement being like, oh, um, this is meant to um, to showcase all of the, the diversity and the skin tones in the game. Like there's just a row of grays at the bottom. Like what skin tone are you appealing to there? This, this is a light palette. This is not an inclusive palette. To say that this is inspired by the sh like skin tones in the game, like the diversity of the game itself and the skin tones included, this isn't it. This is bad, like especially because this palette already exists and they've just repurposed it. Like they basically took whatever they had left and were like, we're just gonna slap some Sims packaging onto there and call it a day. Mm-mm. No. A whole lot of no. This is bad. Okay, going into our first ColourPop item on the list. We have these five pan palettes that strikingly resemble Natasha Denona's five pan mini palettes. Which is like, it's not to say that it's a direct copy because a lot of other brands and eyeshadow palettes have the same like format. So it's not like overly imaginative or unique. Like even for Natasha Denona, it's not very unique. These are just boring. Like I saw them, I'm like, these are just smaller versions of stuff they've already made. Like all of this is just super boring. I have no interest in getting any of these, especially because like two out of the five have pressed glitters in them. And I feel very strongly about pressed glitters. I just, they ruin a palette for me. I do have pressed glitters in my collection because of other palettes that I, I do enjoy, but for the most part, I try to avoid pressed glitters and just, they're just, it's just boring. It's just boring. There's not really much else to say. I've heard people really like these who got them. So I'm sure, I'm sure they're fine, but I just, meh, meh, kind of boring. These are not going on the wish list. On to the next one. This is the second time BH is showing up on the list. I don't remember if it's the last time, but they have this new Lost in Los Angeles collection complete with a highlighter palette. Um, I don't actually know what the highlighter palette is called. Après in Aspen. Okay, so you have the Après in Aspen, which is a face palette with six highlighters in it, and you have the Lost in Los Angeles eyeshadow palette. So two different things that they're adding to their travel series. And I love their travel series. Like I have the Love in London one and I do want to get more of them. And I don't think I'm going to get this one. I'm not a big pastels person and the pastels that I do like, I already have. So this one is just, eh. I do like a few of the tones in here. I like the, um, like the dark olivey golden gold shade, like shimmery shade in there is kind of pretty. That like sort of gray blue shimmer is nice. I like this. I like it. It's fine. But is it going on my wish list? No, it's okay. I think it's inspired. I think it's very appropriate. The one time that I've been to Los Angeles, I think the colors are very appropriate. I think it fits. Like aesthetically, it really fits. I like it. I like it, but I'm I'm not gonna buy it. The swatch the swatches are really pretty. I will say the swatches are gorgeous, absolutely beautiful. I'm I'll keep an eye on this, but for the for the most part, I, I don't really need this. It's good, but I'm fine without it. The next thing I wanted to talk about is a new release from Melt Cosmetics. This is their blueprint collection, including their blueprint palette. So this was originally a stack of eyeshadows that they've now made into a palette, which they have done before with the She's in Parties palette, which I have and I love. This one I was very tempted by when I first saw it. I was like, hmm, maybe I'll put this on my wish list because I don't really have a lot of blues in my collection. I would like more, but I'm kind of turned off by that half of the palette just being neutrals. 
and a red because I have those tones already. I don't really need that. I really wish this had been like all blues or at least like turn turn the the trend around where it's just like a blue palette with a pop of neutral. Like that would have been cool. That would have been an interesting homage to the trend of this past couple of years that has been the neutral palette with a pop of blue. It's like, why don't we do a blue palette with a pop of neutral? But this is just like, half blue, half neutral, and I'm not really here for it. So I'd rather just get a palette that's all blue, like the Blue Moon palette from ColourPop. Um, this does also come with two what looks like gel liners, which I'm not a fan of, so that's a no for me. Um, yeah, overall, this is okay. This is nice. I've heard good things from the people who bought it, but again like the other things it's not really going on my wish list this does not tug at my heartstrings the way a couple of other things on this list are going to so yeah nah no thanks no thanks we're good next we have this collection this new collection from rare beauty it is called the stay vulnerable collection it includes cream blushes lip gloss balms gloss balms is that what they're called? Glossy Lip Balm. Okay, it's a glossy lip balm, and then we have a liquid eyeshadow as well. They come in five colors. We've got Nearly Apricot, Nearly Neutral, Nearly Rose, Nearly Mauve, and Nearly Berry, and that is like the five colors in all three of the products for kind of like a monochromatic sort of set, if that's what you're going for. I'm really drawn to the Nearly Apricot colors because there's just there's just something about me lately that I just I just go for oranges. I really like oranges and the berries and I'm just I'm drawn to all of these to be completely honest with you they all look beautiful except maybe the brown I don't really care for much for brown but all the other colors are beautiful um I will probably in the new year in the new year next year 2022 pick up three of these just just for curiosity's sake because everything that I bought from Rare Beauty I've enjoyed so far and I just enjoy the aesthetic of the brand I feel like I'll get my use out of the products because I've been getting a lot of use out of the stuff that I already have so I feel like it was it would be a safe a safe thing to add to my wish list and I'm I'm very intrigued by those by the blushes at least and the gloss I kind of want to try that formula the gloss I might end up getting sooner because I'm almost out of balm and I need to re replace my my lip balm soon so I might I might just replace it with one of these these glossy lip balms because I'm, I'm just curious enough about the the formula and the other two things I'll, I'll get in the future because another two things I'm really curious about. I love Rare Beauty. What more can be said? These look really good and I've heard really good things about them from people who have tried them. So good job, Rare Beauty. This is this is already on my wish list. <laughs> We're actually making really good time here. I'm actually really proud of myself. The last time I did this, it took forever because I had a lot to say about a lot of things and I was trying to fill up time and, and, and make it like drag on a little bit more. And now I'm just trying to get through it all. Okay, we have something from ColourPop. Kel Surprise. This is their Lunar New Year collection. I like the idea of this and it's it's interesting because they're coming out with new lippy sticks and some people have said that they haven't added to their lippy stick collection in a while. Um, I think the last time they did was with one of their autumn collections. It was the sandstone collection. They added a few new new shades to that line. They all look really pretty. The, these palettes don't really call my name. They're just both neutral palettes, one with a pop of red, the other one with a pop of gold or yellow in there. Um, a little bit of orange. It's just meh, meh. I'm, I don't know how I feel about a lot of these Lunar New Year collections just because part of it is like, yes, you're celebrating this culture, but how much of it is you commodifying it and making it into a cash grab and I'm not from that culture so I can't really speak to it so if, if you are and you have feel a certain way about so many of these companies suddenly starting to do lunar year lunar new year collections because it's just it's just a convenient way to make money at the time wrapping it up in this holiday packaging the special packaging and a lot of the time is just repackaging old products and redistributing them as this lunar new year collection so if you have any strong feelings about collections like this or just the trend in general of repackaging or, or packaging in like the Lunar New Year aesthetic, let me know in the comments below because I'd, I'd really love to hear what you think. I can't really speak for it. I'm not from that culture. But if you do feel strongly about this, if you have any type of opinion, let me know in the comments below because I'm not educated enough about this to really know. I can only explain from my perspective how I would feel if my culture was... Uh, used in this way. And with ColourPop, because they've had issues 
representing cultures in the past. I'm looking at you, Sandstone Collection. I, like, I just don't know how to feel about companies doing that. I just really don't. It's like, if you're gonna put care and respect into one collection of cultural products, why don't you do it with all of them? Like, why? Why? Okay, let's look at this next piece of ridiculousness. Now from Morphe. From Morphe, we have a new 35S palette. This one is called the Sweet Oasis. And I'm not gonna lie, these colors are really pretty. Like they're actually quite nice, but it's Morphe. It's Morphe. You can find these colors in a bunch of other palettes that are not Morphe. This looks strangely familiar. It looks like the color pop through my eyes palette, the, the collaboration that they did with I Love Sarah He, which I have and I adore that palette, looks vaguely familiar to that, except they've expanded the greens. There's a lot of colors in here that look exactly the same. Go figure, it's Morphe. Yeah, whatever. It's meh. It's mad, the colors are pretty, but there's too many repeat shades in here and it looks like something I already have. Bye bye Morphe. We've got ColourPop again on the list. This time it is the Cloud Spun Cotton Candy Collection. So this is a collection that is accompanying the pink palette that they released over the holidays. It was this one in a blue palette. It was like a pastel blue and pastel pink that they did. I think it was for Black Friday. Like they had a big bundle with all of them and they had released those two palettes during that, that sale week. So now we have a whole collection to accompany the pink one and I assume the blue one is coming afterwards. They haven't announced that yet, but I'm sure it's coming. This is okay. This is not anything we haven't seen before. It, they have another pink palette already called the Ooh La La. A lot of people like that one. That was, I think their very first nine pan palette. This one's okay. Like it's cute. It's cute. Like the collection is cute. Those two blushes look really nice. The, they've added more lippy sticks, so apparently they're they're going along with this lippy stick trend. They heard people that they wanted more lippy sticks, and they're like, here are more lippy sticks. Um, they've got some like so juicy balms in there, a highlighter. It's it's cute. It's cute. Do I need it? No. Am I gonna buy it? No. Is it going on my wish list? No. Thank you, ColourPop, for more unnecessary shit. <laughs> Speaking of ColourPop, here they go again. We have the Like Dynamite Gel Line Gel Color Vault. It's the Creme Gel Color Vault, and this is basically nine different paint pots of the Creme Gel Eyeliner, but it's the one that you have to, it's in the little containers, not in the actual pen form, um, where you dip your brush in and you, you apply it that way. That's not my preferred way to apply eyeliner, so I will not be putting this on my wish list. The colors are really nice. Um, the collection itself is inspired by that um, BTS song, Dynamite, which I heard way too many times because me and my boss decided, because we've been doing this thing on Fortnite because they do occasional concerts on Fortnite, and so we've been watching most of them together. The last one we saw was the BTS one, but we thought it was gonna be like a full-on thing, like potentially what they had done with Travis Scott, and then they did a big like DJ festival with like a bunch of different musicians after that. And then we thought that was gonna be the same thing for, for BTS, but no, it was literally just them on like this big screen in Fortnite playing the BTS music video over and over and over and over and over again. So the amount of times I've heard this song in, in consecutive plays, too many. I'm, I'm just kind of done with it. It's a good song, but I'm just done with it for now until I've gotten it out of my brain and then I can reintroduce it slowly. But that's what this is inspired by and it's it's cute. The colors are really nice. I This color story is actually quite beautiful. I wish this had been an eye, eyeshadow palette. I really wish this had been an eyeshadow palette because this would have been gorgeous. This would have been really pretty as an eyeshadow palette, but it's ColourPop, they dropped the ball, so. What a surprise. I haven't had wine in a while. ColourPop, not actually giving people what they want. Here's like a slightly different version of what you might want. This would make a nice eyeshadow palette. Mm -mm, we're gonna make it like gel liner. Thanks ColourPop. I love how at this point in my list, all the ColourPop stuff just has a whatever at the end of it. Like I put down ColourPop like dynamite, whatever. And the next one also has a whatever after it. It's just generally how I feel about ColourPop now. I fell in love with them this year and I, or last year, it is 2021 now. I fell in love with them last year, bought like absolutely everything. And then when I realized that they just kept releasing new shit without thinking about it I would just kind of like I'm over it I'm over it okay so this is a thing I actually do kind of want and 
the colors are beautiful, but also just the packaging and the imprints on each individual thing is just beautiful. This is the Nomad Cosmetics Iceland palette. They teased this for a while on their Instagram. They kept giving these hints about what their next travel palette would be. Um, I think one of the lists or one of the um, hints was that people like to go swimming here. Another one was like there's some of the largest lava flows in the world. Um, that it's very green. I didn't expect it to be Iceland. I'm not surprised. I'm, I didn't expect it, but I'm also not surprised. And just looking at this, it's beautiful. It is absolutely gorgeous. And I love that they've taken this kind of like fire and ice theming and just really run with it. That minty green paired with that purple and that blue underneath, is like on the far right is absolutely gorgeous and then that that column right beside it with the the three the two shiny the shiny minty green and the more olivey toned green and then the black underneath gorgeous that warm tone column in the middle beautiful and everything after that is just mm, this is this might be the blue palette of my dreams and I might I'm, this is going on my wish list for sure and come 2022 when I can actually buy things again and I've thought about it for a while longer this might be a palette that I pick up because I don't have enough blue in my collection. I have been looking to add more into it. So this might be the blue that I want. I also just live for the whole fire and ice theme. I'm a big Game of Thrones fan. So the books, not the show. I'm going to be angry about how the show ended for eternity. Moving on so that I don't start ranting about Game of Thrones, which is very easy to make me start doing. We have more ColourPop whatever. This time it's an Ulta exclusive, which they're apparently putting onto their website afterwards. It's the... Melrose collection, which is inspired by Melrose Avenue in LA. It's okay. It's meh. It's more neutrals. It's more neutrals and some lip glosses. All right. There's a dark lip gloss in there, like a dark brown lip gloss, which I don't think they've done yet. Um, that's pretty unique. Yeah, I'm okay with this collection. It's just, it's not for me. It's neutral, it's meh. There's nothing really that special about it, to me anyway. I can, I can skip this and I won't cry about it. Next, we have something that I'm actually very excited about. This is Samantha Ravindal's new brand. It's called Auric. And they're launching with two products and one of which I really want. And it's that glow, the Glow Lust. It's like, um, I feel like it's kind of the same sort of product as the Hollywood Flawless Filter from Charlotte Tilbury, where it just adds like a glow, a, like a subtle highlight underneath your foundation to just make your skin look a little bit more dewy. And I really like that. I've been wanting to try a product like that for a really long time. Um, and I want the, the one from Charlotte Tilbury has been on my list forever, but at the point where I can start introducing new stuff into my collection, I might actually pick up this one instead because I just like, I watched Samantha Ravindal's video about like explaining her brand and explaining the vision behind it and the reasoning as to why she created it. And it's just like, it's really interesting. I love that kind of personability and intention behind what you make. And that's really something that I would like to support. So when the time comes, I would like to support this brand and I want to get the, the Glow Lust product. It just looks really beautiful. The packaging looks gorgeous. I love that it comes in glass packaging. Um, I might end up picking up one of the eyeshadow things too. It's called the Smoke Reflect. It comes with a cream and a powder um, eyeshadow, which I love. I, I love cream and powder everything. Like when it comes in a duo, it's like, mm, yeah, let's give it to me. The Patrick Ta cream and powder blushes. I live for them. So this is the same thing sort of, but with eyeshadow. And I'm, I'm intrigued. I will probably pick one up. By the time I can actually buy more things and introduce new stuff into my collection, she'll probably have come out with more in her in her brand. So, but I do really, really want to try the Glow Lust um, Dewy Radiant Luminizer. I'm excited for her brand. I'm really excited to see where she goes with it and where she goes with her career because I think she really deserves it. She's a very intentional person. She has, she's very honest and genuine. Like. I'm very excited for her and what is coming in her future. Good job, Samantha. I'm proud of you. Next is something that pulls at my heartstrings so much. And this is the thing that of anything so far has been tempting me to break my no buy. And we're only, we're not even through January and I already want to break my no buy. I feel like there's going to be that one thing every single month this coming year that's going to be that temptation for me that I'm gonna wanna break the no buy for. This is the first one in January, and this is the 
Kaleidos and Angie Nikvist's palette. This is the Club Nebula palette and it is so beautiful. It's so pretty. I live for those swatches. I live for all of those colors. There's so much versatility in this one palette. It's gorgeous and I just, I want it all over my face. I just, Lord, give me strength to not break my no buy for this palette. Lord, give me strength. Lord, whatever exists up there. Give me the strength I need to resist the urge, the temptation. I will be successful in this no buy, but if there was one thing, one thing that is making me wanna break it right now, it is this palette, because not only do I love the palette, but I also love Angie. She's amazing. I love her videos. I never miss a single one. She just, she has this energy about her that's just completely contagious. It's just, she's so happy, and I love the way that she talks about things. I love how honest she is whenever she's like, had enough of a company's shit, she just lets loose and it's so good to see. I love it. She just holds nothing back and it makes me really happy to see. We all need more of that energy in our lives. And she's just, I couldn't think of anybody who is more deserving or more fitting for, for Kaleidos to do a collaboration with because it's, it's super on brand. Her style of makeup is very on brand for Kaleidos, I think. So this was a perfect collaboration. I couldn't have th thought of anybody more perfect to do a collaboration with Kaleidos. So this is a beautiful palette. I'm really sad I won't be able to get it right away. Like really, really sad. And I hope, I hope against hope that this will be available in 2022 and that it's not a limited edition product because if I, if I have to miss out on this, I, I will cry. I will cry. But great job, Angie. Great job, Kaleidos. This is beautiful. Next, we have something that I was very excited about. This is the thing that I thought was going to make me want to break my no buy. This is what I thought was going to be that temptation. This is the ColourPop and Animal Crossing collaboration. I have a lot of feelings about this. My very first thought when I saw this was, is that a pressed glitter in every single one of those four pan palettes. And I did some digging. Turns out it is a pressed glitter in every single four pan palette they're releasing in this collection. Pressed glitters are not eye safe. Basically making each four pan palette a three pan palette because one shade is essentially unusable. That's the first, the first issue I had. The second issue is that these are basically all four pan renditions of palettes that already exist. The Color Pop has already made. The Blathers one, Blathers and Celeste, it's just brown? That's it? It's like the new nude mood palette in a four pan and added a pressed glitter. Stupid. The, the Nook and the Nooklings one is just mint to be. It's just the mint to be palette. Ugh. I hate it. The only like slightly unique one that like like really caught my interest is the Isabelle one because I like that yellow shimmer in there paired with that pink and that is like ex basically the exact color story I would have chosen for Isabelle minus the pressed glitter. Just get rid of your pressed glitters. Nobody wants them. What's doing in here? Get it out. I hate it so much. Ugh. But yeah, the Isabelle one, I have the least amount of problems with the color story. And then the Able Sisters one is just like, it's lilac you a lot and it's my pleasure. Like that exists already. The packaging is cute as hell. Like that's, I'm not gonna deny that. The packaging is cute as hell. But I feel so strongly that they dropped the ball with this collection that I'm going to make a video redesigning all of this. All of it. This just, the only things that really kind of drew me in were the lipsticks because I really like the um, Just a Tint Lip Crayons. That's just one of my favorite formulas from ColourPop. And I think that these colors are really pretty and I love that they themed them after the different fruits on the island. That just makes me really happy. I love that. I don't like that the blushes are only two and they're colors that we've seen before. Um, the pink one in this photo, um, I've seen swatches of it and videos from other creators. It is darker than it looks in this photo. It's more of like a movie pink, which is interesting. That's one that they have, no, that's a lie. The Dark Blooms collection had a dark movie pink blush, so whatever. There you go again, ColourPop and duping yourselves. Packaging, super cute again. I wish I had seen more blushes for all the different types of flowers, like, if they had made one blush for each flower type, I would have been happy. I know it's a lot of flowers. There's a lot of different flowers you have in Animal Crossing, but just for consistency's sake, you did one lipstick for every single fruit. 
at least give me one blush for every single flower. Then you get a glitterly obsessed glitter gel, which is whatever. And then you have a super shock eyeshadow, which is again, whatever. It's nothing we haven't seen before. This whole collection is, it's nothing we haven't seen before. The only redeeming quality about any of this is the packaging. It's the packaging. And that's not enough to make me want this. And honestly, I'm kind of glad because I didn't need another thing that would be my temptation to break my no buy year rules. So I'm happy that they dropped the ball with this, honestly. One less thing for me to want, but I will be redesigning it in the way that I wanted it to be. So stay tuned for that. Okay, now we have something else from Natasha Denona. This is the mini love collection. So she obviously has her giant love palette, 65 US dollars. Now she has a mini version of that palette. It's really cute. Um, I don't think it's really anything special. You have a, a mauve shimmer and a mauve matte, a darker brown, a cream sort of shimmer and a pink shimmer. It's pretty. I don't think this is going to be added to my wish list because I have stuff in my collection that does this already. I've heard the Natasha Denona formula is really nice. I've never tried it. The only Natasha Denona thing I have is the um, liquid eyeshadow in Scarab, which I love. I love using it as an eyeliner, to be honest. Um, the cream, I, there's a cream blush in here, which is cool. So in that blush and highlight duo, the blush is a cream blush. And I really like the tone of that pink. It's very pretty and quite unique. Like, I don't think I have anything quite like that in my collection. The highlight is, it's a highlight I have, probably have. It looks almost like a rose gold highlight. I think it's meant to be like sort of a rose gold. Again, I have something like that already. The only thing that really kind of tempts me is that lip lipstick color. It's a very pretty sort of muted mauve color. It tempted me until I realized the shade is quite similar to one of the Rare Beauty lip souffles that I have. And then I talked myself out of it. So it was going to go on my wish list, And I had the screenshot ready to go up on my, on my wish list on Instagram. And then I talked myself out of it because I was like, oh, it looks really similar to the Rare Beauty um, Courage shade in the Lip Souffle. So I'm glad I talked myself out of it. But yeah, I have no problems with this collection. It's really nice. I feel like a lot of people will enjoy it. I think it's pretty. The cream blush is one of the things I'm interested in. The highlight is nice. Like, it's, it's nice. It's good. I have no problems here. Good job. Once again, Natasha Denona, you nailed it. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to talk about is on Makeup Release Radar, and this is from Alter Ego. Alter Ego is releasing two new palettes, uh, one that is based off of the Natasha Denona Love palette and one that is based on the Natasha Denona Bronze palette. One of those has been on my list for a long time of things I've wanted to try, but I've been very reluctant to get it just because I've heard that the, the looks that you get with it are very kind of monochromatic, like you can only really achieve one sort of look with it. That's the bronze palette. So they're releasing the Canyon palette, which is a dupe for the Natasha Denona bronze. And then they also have the Blooms palette, which is a dupe for the Natasha Denona love palette. I kind of saw this coming, like Alter Ego was due to release something else soon and I was hoping it would be the bronze palette because to pay 65 US dollars 88 or 87 I believe Canadian it's a lot to pay for a palette that you can only really get one look out of and it wasn't it, it just wasn't something I really wanted to spend that much money on right away so I'm happy that they're coming out with this and I'll probably pick it up um, it's already on my wish list. <laughs> it's probably something I'll pick up next year when I'm done my no buy because it is, it has been, the Natasha Denona one has been on my wish list for a very long time. So this is probably one that I will pick up because I don't honestly have a lot of shades like this in my collection. So it would be filling a hole that I am currently missing. The Blooms palette, while yeah, it would kind of be filling a hole for me, it's not necessary. It looks a lot like the Jackie Ina palette. Like I can get a lot of the same vibes from the Anastasia Beverly Hills Jackie Ina palette, I think. So I don't really feel like I need this. It's pretty and like if I had it, I would use it, but I think it's just, it's just too similar to something I already have. So I don't, I don't really need it and I'm I'm happy to not have to put something else on my wish list that I don't need, but it's nice. I've like Alter Ego has a fantastic formula. I have two of their palettes already and I use them a lot. They're really nice. I'm excited for them and I'm excited for this release. Alter Ego, 
Keep doing you, boo. I love it. I love it. Okay, so we have a couple more things to talk about. Um, BH Cosmetics, once again, third time they're on the list. BH Cosmetics is also coming out with a Lunar New Year collection for the Year of the Ox. There's a few products in this collection. We have an eyeshadow palette with 21 shades. We have liquid eyeliner. We have some false lashes and some oh my god glitters, which I don't know what those are, but it just says oh my god glitter. And obviously I'm not gonna get that. Same thing with the lashes. If you know me, you know I hate fake lashes. I tried to put one on my eyelash from that, in the last boxy charm. I was like, no, this is just not gonna work for me. The eyeshadow palette is cute. I have, I have the same feelings that I do about the other Lunar New Year collection from ColourPop. Um, is my question is like, is this just a cash grab? I really don't know. The palette's nice. It is nice. There's not really any shades here that pull at my heartstrings. Like I don't, I don't feel any palpitations when I look at this. It's nice, but it's not something I'm going to put on my wish list. It's really not. It's, it's okay. It's nice, but it's just nice. That's all. That is all. And the last thing that I want to talk about is the latest in the ColourPop shenanigans, and it is the Wild Child collection. This is a monochromatic brown palette. They've altered their pattern of late, which is excluding pressed glitters from their nine pan palettes, and they've decided to include one in this palette. It comes with two blushes, three new lippy sticks, and three new eyeshadows, the three new Super Shock eyeshadows. The two darker blushes look really nice. As oversaturated as the market is with ColourPop, I'm glad to see that they're gearing more towards darker skin tones because a lot of their latest releases have been very white looking. So it's nice to see that they're, they're kind of changing directions and thinking more about the more melanated of the human population because they, they haven't for a while. So this is, it's nice to see, but otherwise it's just more, more ColourPop shenanigans. If this had been the only collection they came out with, I would have been happy. This and maybe the wine or wine and dine, wine and, wine and only, that one. Yeah, the wine and only collection, because it's the other very dark uh, leaning collection they came out with recently. So that one and this one, if these two had been the only things they released in the last like month, that would have made me happy. I would have been okay with that. But no, we had to have so many other things. I'm just done. I'm just done with ColourPop. So that's basically it of the things that I wanted to talk about this time around. Um, all the things that I had strong feelings about, whether they were positive or negative. Oh, I don't have to be on the side anymore. Let's go back to the middle. But yeah, there were several things in here that I actually really wanted, and there were a lot of things that I really didn't want and had strong feelings about in the more negative opinion category. Thank you for sticking around with me if you've reached the end of this video. Uh, let me know down below once again what you feel about Lunar New Year collections, whether if you're part of that culture and you feel a certain way one or the other, let me know. I would really love to educate myself more about just how people feel with the Lunar New Year collections, whether you feel like it's honoring your culture and being respectful, or if you feel like it's just a cash grab and you're kind of tired of seeing it. Once again, Thank you so much for watching my video. If you're not subscribed already, the subscribe button is down below. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps my algorithm. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Are you done? It's not done. Bye.